Good day everybody, welcome to another video and this one should be pretty interesting for anybody interested in PvP in ESO because it is confirmed there is an MMR system now in Battlegrounds. Now actually this was always there as far as we are informed. It just wasn't working very well because of the lack of people tuning into Battlegrounds and the fact that pre mates were qualified in the same way as Pugs. That has all changed because with Somerset prioritization of pre-made groups, so people who are playing with their friends in groups, are going to put them more likely with other pre-mades. And I will explain to you how that all works based on this thread that Fogard's released. Um, and I'll, I'll give him a shout out and all of that in a sec. But basically what it summarizes is that you are more likely to put with people of a similar ability. So to give you the rundown for anybody who just wants to get out of here, the simple fact is that if you are a brand new character you're probably going to be put with people who are atrociously bad at pvp they're probably not going to have a clue what they're doing some of them are probably going to be low cp who are just getting slaughtered every game some of them may have never done it before and you may also get people like yourself if you are one of these who's a very experienced pvp just on a different character i know this to be true so when i play on my templar my templar has played a ton of battlegrounds it probably averages nearly 5k score a game even these days in deathmatch it gets some pretty hard games i'm almost always against pre-mades and if i'm not against pre-mades i know everybody in that lobby off by heart they're very strong players i hopped on my warden on my Magic dk where i've not yet played battlegrounds since somerset Lo and behold, the lobby is atrocious. I go in and I go something like 25-0 instantly. Or on the Warden, I went something like 8-1 and one with a pretty awful team myself. You know, atrocious people. You get the general idea here. The lobby is starting to get to a point where it's balanced. And this is only good for the game. Because if you're getting put in a lobby with people of similar ability, then your games are going to be better. It's all fun and dandy, destroying your opponents over and over again, getting 30kd or whatever without dying. But when you get a competitive game, it is way more fun. If you're fighting people who are a similar skill level to you, getting these intense fights, longer fights, the battle will be a close fought fight and the winner will actually be a winner rather than just a sl complete slaughterhouse that's no fun for anybody, you and them included. So, we're going to shout out this Fred real fast. Fogard is, as far as I know, a PCNA player. Um, I do hear a bit about him from Fengrish and people like that. And basically, he is a diehard Battleground player. Even before this patch, I used to join in some of his threads. I do love the Battlegrounds. I think it's a cool concept. And he's done a lot of research on how this MMR works. So I'm going to cover some of the points he goes over. Again, shout out to him. I'll probably link the thread in the description of this video because it's that good. But he's done his research here and I thought it'd be really interesting to make a video out of interest. So first things first, just tell you what matchmaker rating is MMR. What it basically is, it determines, am I good, am I bad? So let's imagine, just for the sake of it, because this is how it would work in a chess tournament, don't ask me why I know that, you'd start at a 1,000 rating. Now, if I do awful, I would drop. So if I'm losing and losing and losing, my rate will drop. And depending what I lose against, that will get worse. So if I was to play someone, for instance, who's got a 14, let's just imagine, and I'm on a 1,000, well, I'm probably a pretty weak player here. I could honestly see my MMR getting at least halved, if not completely decimated to the window. Now, this will eventually average out to the point where your skill level is achieved. So I've done thousands of fights. I'm constantly getting a close fight with a guy who's 40 or 400 or whatever the number is. We're getting pretty similar fights. Some of us will win, some will lose. That's going to be roughly our skill level. And so in the future, we're going to be matched with that. We're going to be put with somebody of a similar skill level so that we get these similar fights. Now, that's good on the low end. How does it work on the high end? So on the high end, if I'm doing very well, I will great gain MMR. And again, if we're destroying people who are much better than us, we'll go up. And if we're doing sort of iffy against them, we'll go down. And we'll find that balance point where we're fighting against a similar ability. And that's where you'll learn to play better. And you may gradually increase. You may go down. Who knows? That's generally what an MMR is, just to give you a description. Now, this is a direct quote. I'm going to quickly highlight this. So if MMR already existed, what did they change with Somerset? So he basically confirms that this was already there. But in Somerset, it now changes. Now, something he forgets to put into here, which I'm sure will be added or might even be somewhere else, is that one big change that comes with Somerset is that it's free to play Battlegrounds now. Everybody has access. Why is that big? There's a way bigger population pool. So many more people are doing Battlegrounds. I see so many of my friends who I would have never seen there before, now there. That means there's more numbers, there's more chance of getting a similar fight. Let's imagine that I am MMR a million. 
Donkey Kong 82 over here, he's MMR zero. The chances of me being put with him are zero in the current system. It's never going to happen. But back when there were probably only about 100 active people in total in Battlegrounds, and probably of those, you'd have maybe 15, 20 on at a time, a maximum of maybe four groups. But the odds are pretty high because, you know, I've got no one else to go with anyway. I'm going to be put against him. He's the only guy queuing, so I have no choice. Now, that's way less common. However, we move on to the big topic here, which is pre-made groups. So this is a hot topic, has been throughout Battleground history, because obviously a group that is organized on TeamSpeak, most pre-mades are probably pretty experienced players looking to destroy. It's going to be a different world because we're going to have this tough, tough fight. And so what they've done now is they've added a multiplier to the value of these groups, just to show you that here. And these values will scale differently between two, three, and four groups. So for instance, if I'm in a pair, I will get a lower multiplier than a four on my MR. And so I am still more likely if I'm a weaker player, queuing as two, to be put with weaker players. And if I'm stronger, I may be put against similar two men, or I may also end up against a four man of a very high standard. Sorry, uh, no, of a medium standard, but I then may get as my two man strong standard, two weak people to balance it out or two medium people to balance it out, or however it may end up, we may even get solo players in there. The point is that by taking this multiplier, we're gonna get in the long term, and it may not be seen straight away, a balance where our MMRs are generally gonna be similar. Opponents on all sides and my own team will have a generally averaged MMR. Now there is a clear problem with this real fast. So this is going to be clarified in this one here. Are they uh, separating the pre mates from solo queues? No. So what they do is they add a multiplier. We've already discussed that. Let's imagine that their individual MMRs are all 1000. Well, they may have a base MMR multiplier of 1.3. We don't know what that number is. There's no information on that, but that would mean they're going to be queued against 1300. So they will be queued against their same ability. Now that's all fine and dandy until you get someone like my Match Templar. So my Match Templar, I'm very strong on that in OCP. It's a pretty deadly build for OCP and I've practiced it a lot. I'm obviously a very experienced player and there are pre-mates out there that aren't that hot or even some pre-mates of good players who just make errors, etc., etc. or they might not be a full pre-mate. Now at this point, we get some rough bites because let's imagine my MMR, we're going to pick a number here, is 5,000. I have no idea what it is. We're not given numbers again. If I'm 5,000 on my MMR, and Billy No Mates over here is, well, actually he has mates, I don't have the mates, whatever. He is zero, and then another guy's zero, another guy's zero, whatever. And we are queuing against a pre-made that has a really good MMR of 2000. That's where it gets dodgy, because at this point, I've got three god-awful players with me against four pretty reasonable players. So individually, I might be able to beat them. But against four, especially if they're on TeamSpeak, it can get tough. Now, of course, that again will balance out in the long run. And another thing to clarify here is because we're not given much clarity on how the MMR system works, there is an issue. So I would never, ever know what my MMR is. I would also not know, more importantly, what determines it. Is it determined by KD? Is it determined by your overall score? So your average score? Is it determined by how you do based on your group score? We are not given clarity on that. And I really hope the Xenomax in the future would do so. So a lot of this discussion is very much about that. What's it based off? But he says, and he is again expert with this stuff, I strongly suspect that it's based off an aggregate of your medal scores. In essence, the sum of all your leaderboard scores. So he believes that it's going to be based on, let's imagine I have a score overall on the leaderboards for deathmatch of 73,000 on capture the flag I have 10,000 and on relics or whatever I have 5,000 whatever it is that will basically be added up and then I'll be put against people of similar standards now the issue with this is that would include a time factor in it now I don't believe that's the case I also don't think that he thinks that's the case I think he's just misphrased this I think it's going to be something to do with the KD and the lose win rate because if it was based on time played, I actually am not even on the leaderboards because I don't play Battlegrounds that often and I use a lot of characters. However, again, my Templar has played a lot of Battlegrounds at a high level. And so my KD is extremely high. My average medal, my total medals is extremely high, etc. I'm being put against people I know have not been doing that many hours again. Definitely, definitely not. Rather than some of the very weak players I see on the top of the leaderboard simply because they've done a lot of hours. So my suspicion, 
And again, I have no idea. Fogard's done his testing. He could easily be right. Is that something is influenced by kill death. Something is influenced by your average medals. I've actually had discussions prior to the implementation of this pre-made system. And I would like to hope that I was at least partly influential for this change. Because I did discuss this a lot with Rich Lambert. In that I suggested going for your average medals. So my assumption would be very likely that it's based on your average medals. So let's say my average medals, well, my, I get 10,000 medals somehow in a game of deathmatch, and then I get 0, 0, 0. I've got four games total, three zeros and a 10,000. What does that make? It makes an average of 2,500. I'll be matched against a similar ability. Now, obviously, I don't have a confirmation of that. Who knows? The big thing finally is this bit here. So what happens if there's nobody left at your MMR. So I'm queuing as in a thousand, everybody else is queuing as 300. Well, it's not gonna wanna put me against these guys. This is not a good balance. How I can't. However, it can after a bit of time. So we don't, again, know the duration. It might be a minute, it might be five minutes, etc. He believes it's five minutes. Maybe he's accurate. I guess he would be. Again, he knows his stuff. It will slowly and surely drop. So let's imagine I start at a thousand, then it will do 900. 850, 800, 750, 700, etc. each five minutes until it finds a similar skill level that's queuing so that we get to a good position. So that means low and short right here, if I solo queue, why do I keep finding pre-mades? I know this firsthand, I'm constantly against them. Why? You've got experience, you know, you know how you're playing, you're a pretty skilled player, and whether you go against a pre-made that's simply inexperienced, or a pre-made that's good, and you get put with other very strong single players, can influence that strongly. That's obviously a big deal, in that there is a bit of stuff in terms of how voice comms and all would influence that, but I don't think that's possible to determine on their end, so I think that's a pretty acceptable standard, and I would hope their multiplier includes that. I'll let you read through this bit here. Nothing too interesting aside of there. Um, here it says about the problem. So this is the bit that I get, and I actually disagree slightly with this problem. If you're a high MMR solo queue, you're almost always going to be a pug fighting against pre-mates. Because, of course, we're a high pre-made. We're, we're a high MMR ourselves. They're going to be medium MMR with the multiplier. They're going to be classified as similar ability. The big thing to remember here is that I think this is going to be based against time because after time this starts to balance out and I'm feeling this more and more on the PCU, the games are always getting very, very close. I've gone from constantly getting 20kd or something stupid to pretty tough games, 8 and 5, 10 and 5, that sort of kind of kd, 1 to 2-ish. Um, sometimes you'd even go negative because you get some pretty hard games. There's a lot of strong players out there and if you get an unlucky matchup, it'll go. But I think after time this is starting to balance out. So far, I would say that all of my games in the past day, so today, have been entirely balanced. There's been no stomping at all on my Templar. I think it's getting there. The question then comes, when is this going to reset? Because is it resetting after the weekly leaderboards end, in which case the start of the next week, I'm going to be stomping again. Does it never reset? Does it go for the rest of time? Does it reset on a server reset? That's a pretty important thing. So I think the big message from this to give to you guys in kind of finalization is that MMR is definitely in the game. It is. It's definitely there in Battlegrounds. As an experienced player, you'll feel that very quickly. As a less experienced, you probably still, you'll probably get less pug stomps. And it's never going to be perfect because sometimes you're going to be queued against big things. I think the big thing the ZMAX need to do now is to give us some clarity of how MMR is done. And better still, I would really advise them to put a scoring system on it to show that MMR. Not for any sense of ego, but for the competitive scene, because it allows people to be competitive with each other. If I see my MMR is a thousand, so and so is a thousand and ten of my friends, I want to beat that. You know, it gives you a competitive spirit and it gets people interested in battlegrounds. And that's true even for inexperienced because they're having fair games. Finally, I do hope they bring into the occasion some sort of spectator mode for Battlegrounds. I think that would be invaluable. But that's not related to MMR. I may make a separate video if people are interested in more discussion from me about Battlegrounds. But I think long and story short, this MMR is good. I like the system a lot. I think Battlegrounds are great. And so far, I think the queuing is really great. Um, yeah. I think that'll do, guys. I hope that was an interesting video. Like I said, I'll link the thread in the description because it's so damn good. Good job, Fogard. And I'll see you guys in the next video.